So this here is the Mayan pyramid of Kukulkan. It's located in Chichen Itza, central Yucatan. And there's something very particular about this photo that I want you to note. It was taken on March 20th, which is the spring equinox. And that's a hint. Because if you look closely, and if you know anything about the Mayan legends, you will know that their central myth talks about a giant plumed serpent that comes down from the sky and impacts the earth, causing the ground to tremble. And look, you can see the snake on the side of the pyramid, cast by the shadow of the sun on spring equinox, when the sun shines from just the correct angle. So this enormous pyramid that cost about a billion dollars or euros if we were to reconstruct it today, just based on the amount of materials and labor, even with modern technology. Can you imagine what kind of effort this must have been for people who really only had their hands to work with? Why did they construct this enormous pyramid? And how come so precise? And what is this giant snake that falls from the sky? Here it is. So this is Kukulkan. And I think it gives us an answer to what the future holds for us today. Because what the Mayans did with this snake was actually they were computing time. They were computing, they were trying to predict the future. Because if you think about what a plumed serpent really is when it falls from the sky, and when you see one, when it appears on the sky, it can spell trouble for humanity. This is from the Book of Miracles in the 1600s. And one of the things that the Mayans did with their technology was to make things like the calendar that allowed them to predict what was going to happen next. This is me taking a ride in a Waymo on a normal day in San Francisco. What am I doing here? I'm using technology that's also taken enormous resources. It took Google $10.6 billion of investment in Waymo to build a machine that can predict the future well enough that it's safe for me to get in the car and trust that it's not going to kill me on my way to my destination. So in a sense, this is an evolution of the Mayan calendar, which, by the way, was astonishingly precise. It's machinery that allows people to predict what's going to happen next, how the seasons will change, etc. And really, like Sam Altman says, the CEO of OpenAI, what we're doing here and what AI essentially is when boiled down to its essence is just people melting sand to arrange it in these very precise ways to be able to perform computations that allow us to tell the future. And now we're running electric current through it at ever increasing amounts in order to be able to scale this. And these are becoming the biggest investments of our time, like the pyramids were back then. And this is just the start. We all know how this is going to compound. This is all of the data centers already taking up more energy and more electricity than most countries. And this, we know, is soon going to compound. You can see this is from the construction of Tesla's Gigafactory in Texas. Look at the size of these enormous fans that are going in to cool all of the GPUs that are going to power Tesla's new AI that allows Tesla to compete against Waymo in self-driving cars now that Tesla has moved from deterministic algorithms to purely neural network-driven AI-based algorithms for its own self-driving. Not only cooling, this is the water. They're constructing uh, basic artificial lakes um, because it takes billions of gallons of water in addition to the air heating or air cooling that they're using. Uh, in order to just keep these machines running. So why all of this enormous investment? So 
okay self-driving cars we all get. But this is from a recent demo by Anthropic. This is actually from the screen of an Anthropic researcher whose name randomly also happens to be Sam. Sam is instructing Claude, the Anthropic algorithm or AI model, to do something specific, which is take control of his computer and perform Sam's jobs, his tasks, on his behalf. Claude literally moves the mouse around and uses the computer on Sam's behalf to do Sam's jobs. Now this is the future, and what it means is that the way we've all grown up using computers, clicking away, these mice, the mouse, is pretty much going the same way as the crank starter shaft of a car that used to be critical for using a car because you couldn't start a car otherwise, which has now become a mere historical curiosity. So for our kids, the computer mouse is going the same way as the crank starter shafts. And what are we having in its place? Well, have you used the new native voice mode on OpenAI's ChatGPT app that you can download on your phone? If you haven't, I recommend you try it because it'll be the first time that you experience a natural conversation with a computer that is pretty much indistinguishable from the movies. And if you think about all of the work that gets done on computers today, I'm pretty sure that no one in this audience can get by their day without having to do something on a computer or phone. It's ma the majority of productive work today in today's advanced society gets done on computers. Now, all of this is basically being automated by computers that can drive themselves the same way that Waymo cars drive themselves on the streets of San Francisco. So when you think about our jobs today, they might actually be closer to this man's job in 1870 as a lamplighter in London than we might think. And as we put new resources online, fire up new nuclear power plants just like Microsoft with its new contract to restart the Three Mile Island power plant that I showed you earlier in the picture, it gets increasingly easy for OpenAI and these companies like Tesla who run the AI models to also apply them not just to computers using themselves or cars driving themselves, but to larger and larger amounts of physical labor through robots, including humanoid robots, like Tesla's Optimus One. And what it's leading to now is that these companies are increasingly going to become more and more focused on resources. And resources, when you look at the solar system, mostly don't exist on Earth. They exist in vast quantities outside Earth's atmosphere in space. And this is why over the next years and decades, you're going to see these companies become increasingly obsessed with control of space travel because they need access to the resources that are available in the Kuiper Belt and the other asteroids around us. So coming back to Earth, if you think about the stock market, and I look back, when I started my career, I founded a company called Jaiku just nearby here with my partner Petteri, and we were making a social media platform that competed with Facebook and Twitter. And I found it very frustrating here in Espo, talking to people, trying to get investment for my company, explaining and trying to reason that social media platforms were going to become the biggest companies. Because I knew that this way, you could reach 
the entire human population in an extremely inexpensive way and influence what they thought about things. And looking back, that pretty much happened. And if I think about today, I feel like we're in a similar kind of stage where I was with Jaiku in 2006, 2007, where most people don't still quite realize the magnitude of the change that AI technology brings. And if you think about, in just in terms of valuations, you know, how much would you pay an AI algorithm to use your computer for you? $10 a month or 100 euros a month? Well, if you think about if you're running a lawyer firm or let's say an accounting firm, and now you were able to take on five times as many customers at half the cost and basically make 10 times as much profit. Is that 1,000 euros a month? 10,000, 100,000 a month? So I am pretty convinced that Sam Altman or someone who takes his role as controlling the leading company that emerges out of this race, maybe it was Mark Zuckerberg with Facebook or Meta last time the race was on, is going to become the world's first trillionaire in terms of just the amount of value that is being created in these companies. And that brings us to this question, well, okay, what about Finland? Today, if you walk on the street in San Francisco and you stop a random person, they're five times as likely to be a millionaire and three times as likely to be a millionaire if you're on the streets in Stockholm than if you stop a random person on the street here in Espo or Helsinki. How is that going to be 20 years from now in 2044? Well, are we all going to reap the benefits and be able to outsource things like, oh, let's say, incubating children to artificial wombs that are controlled by AI that keeps our babies in perfect health, like in this movie that recently featured at Sundance that I recommend called The Pod Generation? Or are the scientists and engineers who own shares in OpenAI, Anthropic, or other winning AI startups and companies going to become so stupendously wealthy compared with the rest of us that they basically occupy their own planet. Like in this other Sundance movie that I also recommend called Landscape with Invisible Hand that talks about how an alien race arrives on Earth <coughs> and they control AI and because now they can access basically infinite resources compared with humanity. They hire humans for all kinds of silly menial jobs and are able to pay them millions of dollars for it, completely collapsing Earth's economy such that most people are left living in a kind of favelas on Earth while the select few who get access then live in this other world with the aliens. How is it going to be this time around? What eventually made the Mayan civilization to collapse was not a fiery plumed serpent impacting Earth. It was their extremely unequal society in which a small class of select few priests and nobility controlled a disproportionate amount of the resources, causing ultimately social order to collapse and the civilization the Mayans had built over hundreds of years to fall into disarray, wars, and anarchy. I'm sure this time, though, it's going to be a different story. Thank you. <laughs>